Today, we'll look at the Administrate Gem by ThoughtBot. The Administrate Gem provides a Rails engine that helps you put together a super flexible admin dashboard. So with this gem, we can create our, we can actually manage our own dashboards, admin dashboard. So let's go ahead and begin. We have our blank Rails application here. So first thing we'll do is we'll create, we'll generate some scaffolds first. So let's say Rails generate scaffold. We'll have article with title and content of type text. We'll also generate another article. We'll say Rails generate scaffold. All right, we'll generate another scaffold. We'll call this blogs, and this will have title, content also. Let's just add text of type text too. And Let's say Rails to do Rails generate scaffold. We'll call this to do's. We'll have a to do of type string and completed of type boolean. So we can run Rails DB migrate to migrate all of our migrations. And then we can now add administrate to our Rails application. You can simply use bundle add administrate. And this will add this to our gem file for us. So we've added our dependencies for administrate. We've installed it. So now we can run the installer for it. If we say Rails generate administrate install, there we go. This has created all our controllers, our dashboards, and all that we'll need to use administrate. So if we head over to our routes, we can see these are the resources we generated with our scaffold generator. However, when we run the installer for administrate, this namespace with admin was also created. So we have the resources for our to-dos, our blogs, and our articles. So if we start up our server using Rails serve or Rails S, we open this in our web browser and we head over to forward slash admin we can see this is our admin panel here. We have our to-dos, our blogs, and our articles. So if we try to create a new to-do here, you can see we can carry out our CRUD actions. The same thing with blog here. If we enter any information here. And the same thing with article here. We can do that here. So if we were to add any validation, let's say we head over to our model for to do, and we want to validate, we want to validate the presence of our, what did we call it? We call it to do, we want to validate its presence. Then we simply add our validation here and we head over to new to do, we can see that if we try to create it now, we can see our validations are also implemented in our admin dashboard here. So we have to have this present. So the next thing that we can do is we can also add another model. For instance, if we go to our console, and we generate another scaffold. We'll say Rails generate scaffold. Let's call this order. We'll have an item number of type integer. And let's just say address of type text. If we run this, our migration for this, and we come back here, you can see that this doesn't appear here. Our new order is not showing up in our dashboard. 
So what we can do is we can use a generator that our ministry provides us with to add orders to our dashboard. So to do that, we'll say Rails generate administrate dashboard. We want to generate a dashboard for order. There we go. We have our order dashboard now created. So what we can do now is we can go to our namespace and we can also add the resources for order. We save it. We come back here. And now we have our orders here. So we can also create our orders from our dashboard here. So if we wanted to add another attribute or add another column to our already existing models here, for instance, for our articles, if you wanted to add an author, let's go ahead and do that and see what how it would look like. We'll say Rails generates migration add author to articles and author should be of type string. And then we can run our migration. And if we come here to our articles and we see, we don't see anything relating to author here. If we click on new, we don't see anything about adding an author name. So let's go ahead and update our dashboard here. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, we open up our app directory, we see a folder here for dashboards. And if we look at our article here, this is our article dashboard. So this article dashboard inherits from administrate that base dashboard. And this is where we can define all our attributes that will appear in our dashboard for articles where we can update our show page attributes, our form attributes. So we can come here and add author. And we want this to be of type string. And if you look here, you can just follow the example that they provide us with, or rather the previous information here. So we want our attributes to be able to submit the string for author. And we have author here again too. And then for our show page, we also want to have author. And for our form, we also want to be able to use author in our form. So we can save this. If we refresh, there we go. We have our author and we can create this now and we can see we have it this also on the show article page two. So administrate also gives us the ability to create custom namespaces. So if we come here and we look at our routes, we see we have a namespace for right here, the admin. In some situations, we may want to have, in some situations, we may have want to have um, only certain users access to some things. For instance, if you have writers, we want them to only have access to our blogs and articles. If you have a supervisor, he can have access to all of this. So one way that we can generate our own custom namespace, if we head over to our console, we can say Rails generate administrate install and then we want to say let's create a namespace and from here we can give the namespace a name like blogger or supervisor there we go so now we have a namespace but we only want him this namespace to be for like our writing articles our articles and blogs. I will change the route for this to, let's change it to blogs. So if we head over to 
blogger there we go we only have access to blogs and articles here so this is an introduction to administrate and how you can use it in your rails applications